The ocular motor pathways direct your eyes to a target of interest and keep them there even if the target is moving. The brain uses four main systems to accomplish this task. Saccades, pursuit, vergence, and the vestibulo-ocular reflex. This video covers horizontal saccades. Part 2 covers vertical saccades. Parts 3 through 5 cover the other systems. Let us say you want to make horizontal saccades to the right. The signal goes from the cerebral cortex on the left down to the pons on the right. A brainstem circuit connects to the right sixth nerve nucleus and then to the extraocular muscles that govern right gaze. If you are directing your eyes toward a target that you glimpse in your right peripheral field, the signal actually starts in the vision pathway. It reaches the primary visual cortex and connects to the left occipital parietal gaze and frontal gaze centers. If you are looking to an unseen target on your right, the signal starts in the left frontal gaze center and connects to the occipital parietal center. From those two cerebral cortex centers, the signal travels down to the superior colliculus and then on to the opposite pontine paramedian reticular formation, shortened to PPRF. The signal silences the PPRF's omnipause cells and excites its birth cells to jumpstart conjugate gaze to the right side. This jumpstart signal goes from the PPRF to the right sixth nerve nucleus. From there, one output goes through fascicular axons out to the ipsilateral lateral rectus muscle, which moves the right eye outward. The other output goes through interneurons in the medial longitudinal fasciculus, or MLF, to the contralateral medial rectus subnucleus, which moves the left eye inward. As the sixth nerve nucleus fires through both outputs, the eyes move conjugately to the right. Once the eyes have moved to the right, another neural network must keep them from being dragged back toward the center by elastic forces in the orbit. To keep that from happening, the PPRF sends a signal to the medial vestibular nucleus and to the medullary nucleus propositus hypoglossy. These two nuclei, called the neural integrators, pump a continuous signal back to the right PPRF and then on to the right sixth nerve nucleus to keep the eyes in right gaze. Another circuit connects these medullary nuclei to the cerebellar vermis, which makes sure that the eye movement accurately reaches the target. Here are the ways that this pathway can go wrong. Damage to descending axons from the frontal and occipital parietal gaze centers in one hemisphere, let us make it the right hemisphere, interrupts the signal to the left PPRF. Saccades to the left will be slow, incomplete, or altogether absent. The eyes may even deviate to the right, especially with lesions of the right parietal lobe. This patient's eyes are slightly deviated to the right. When instructed to look to her right, she can do it. When instructed to look to her left, her eyes barely travel past the midline. When her head is forcibly rotated to the right, her eyes move past the midline to the left. In other words, she cannot execute saccades to the left, but an intact vestibulo-ocular reflex triggered by the oculocephalic maneuver, moves her eyes to the left. The dissociation between a deficient saccadic system and a preserved vestibulo-ocular reflex is called a supranuclear gaze palsy. In this patient, the unilateral left supranuclear gaze palsy is part of hemispatial motor neglect caused by a large right hemisphere stroke. A lesion that interrupts this cerebral pathway on both sides will impair saccades to the left and to the right. But the ancient vestibular pathway, which resides entirely in the brainstem, will be preserved. So the doll's eye, or oculocephalic maneuver, will move the eyes even when the patient cannot will the eyes to move from side to side. 
This dissociation between impaired saccades and preserved vestibulo-ocular reflex eye movements is called a supranuclear gaze palsy. This patient has suffered bifrontal and biparietal ischemia. He cannot move his eyes fully to the right or to the left. But if his head is moved in the doll's eye or oculocephalic maneuver, his eyes move more fully. This abnormality is called a supranuclear gaze palsy. Direct damage to the PPRF on one side interferes with ipsilateral horizontal saccades. A lesion here also damages the nearby sixth nerve nucleus so that pursuit and the vestibulo-ocular reflex will also be impaired. In other words, the patient cannot will the eyes to move to the side of the lesion and the doll's eye or oculocephalic maneuver will not move them either. Here's an example. Look as far to your right as you can, but don't move your head. Look all the way to your right. Now look all the way to your left. Now back all the way to the right. Way fast to the left. Now back to the right as fast as you can go. Even when his head is moved from side to side in the doll's eye or oculocephalic maneuver, his eyes do not move to the right. Damage to the PPRF on both sides of the pons can also damage its burst cells, which are responsible for generating saccades. In that case, saccades will be slow in all directions. I call this phenomenon eyes in molasses. A common cause is spinocerebellar ataxia, a disorder that comes on in middle age and is often inherited. MRI usually shows volume loss in the cerebellum and in the pons. Damage to the sixth nerve fascicular axons causes an ipsilateral abduction deficit that affects all eye movement systems. But it differs from a PPRF lesion or sixth nerve nuclear lesion in that it does not cause a horizontal gaze deficit. That is because the axons leaving the nucleus and traveling in the medial longitudinal fasciculus to the contralateral third nerve nucleus are preserved. Such a sixth nerve fascicular lesion will cause esotropia. Why? Because the lesion damages abduction of the ipsilateral eye, yet spares adduction of the contralateral eye. Here's what it looks like. By the way, fascicular sixth nerve lesions lie in heavy brainstem neural traffic, so they almost always also produce other neurologic abnormalities, such as ataxia, nystagmus, and hemiparesis. Damage to the medial longitudinal fasciculus, or MLF, on one side interferes with ipsilateral adduction. This condition is called internuclear ophthalmoplegia, or INO. INO may show up as an obvious adduction deficit, in which case it is often misdiagnosed as a partial third nerve palsy. Now all the way to your right, don't turn your head, all the way to your right, fast. Left, right, right, left. Now look all the way to your right, and now all the way to your left, right, and left. INO may show up as a subtle adduction deficit, in which case it will be overlooked altogether because pursuit is tested rather than saccades and because the patient may not have symptoms. Okay. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia can be subtle. Look at this patient. When he pursues a moving target from side to side, you do not see much wrong except nystagmus in the abducting eye on extreme side gaze.
but when he shifts gaze quickly with saccades from one target to another, the adducting eye lags behind the abducting eye, which overshoots. This adduction lag is caused by a lesion in the medial longitudinal fasciculus in the midbrain, pons, or medulla. The usual cause is multiple sclerosis, as it is here. Be aware that myasthenia gravis can mimic such an eye movement disorder. Sometimes the lesion damages not only the PPRF, but also the sixth nerve nucleus and the MLF on the same side. In that case, you will see a gaze palsy on one side and an INO on the same side. The eye on the side of the lesion, shown here on the right, does not move horizontally in any direction. The other eye can abduct. This abnormality is called a one and a half syndrome. We award one point for the unilateral horizontal gaze palsy and half a point for the ipsilateral INO. An even larger pontine lesion may damage the PPRF, the MLF, the six nerve nucleus, and its fascicles on the same side. In this upcoming video, you will see a right INO, a right gaze slowing, and a right abduction deficit. This is a right one and a half syndrome plus a right six nerve palsy. When this patient looks to the left, the right eye does not adduct completely and the left eye has nystagmus. When he looks to the right, the left eye has a slow adducting saccade and the right eye does not abduct at all. Vertical gaze is normal. The lesion was a pontine cavernoma that had hemorrhaged. Damage to the nucleus propositus hypoglossi or medial vestibular nucleus and their connections causes gaze evoked or side beat jerk nystagmus. Why does this oscillation happen? Because damage to the neural integrator blocks the tonic signal that keeps the eyes from being dragged back towards center by elastic orbital forces. The brain issues an automatic compensatory psychotic signal, setting up a side beat nystagmus. Many brainstem lesions in this region display this kind of nystagmus. Damage to the cerebellum or its connections to the pons interferes with accuracy of saccades, leading to brief dampening ocular oscillations with each refixational eye movement. This disturbance is called ocular dysmetria. When this patient is instructed to move his eyes from side gaze to a target straight ahead, his eyes overshoot the target. Then they oscillate around the fixation target with decreasing amplitude and finally settle on the target. This is ocular dysmetria, a type of psychotic oscillation. It's the ocular equivalent of ataxia. In fact, it is usually associated with ataxia in the limbs, gait, or speech in disorders of the cerebellum or brainstem.